chapter 19. For the leader, a psalm of David. The heavens declare the glory of God, and the firmament showeth his handiwork. Day unto day utter speech, and night unto night revealeth knowledge. There is no speech, there are no words, neither is their voice heard. Their line is gone out through all the earth, and their words to the end of the world. In them hath he set a tent for the sun, which is the bridegroom coming out of his chamber, and, re and rejoiceth as a strong man to run his course. His goings forth is from the end of the heaven, and his circuit unto the ends of it, and there is nothing hid from the heat thereof. The law of the Lord is perfect, restoring the soul. The testimony of the Lord is sure, making wise the simple. The precepts of the Lord are right, rejoicing the heart. The commandment of the Lord is pure, enlightening the eyes. The fear of the Lord is clean, enduring forever. The ordinances of the Lord are true. They are righteous altogether. More to be desired are they than gold, yes, than much fine gold, sweeter also than honey and the honeycomb. Moreover, by them is your servant warned, and keeping of them is great reward. Who can discern his errors? Clear you me from the hidden faults. Keep back your servant also from presumptuous sins, that they may not have dominion over me. Then shall I be faultless, I shall be clear from great transgression. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable before you, O Lord, my rock and my redeemer. All right, let's go back up verse 1. Once again, this psalm, uh, Psalm 19. Psalm 19 is a, a, a beautiful psalm and among my favorites, uh, not particularly having one. But this one here is one that is uh, ha has a lot of meaning. We're going to uh, pick it up here, and it's for the leader. That's that's God. He is the leader. He is the one in charge here, and all are following him. It is the Psalm of David. David means the beloved or the loved, and he is the one I call the chosen one. We'll pick it up here in verse 2. The heavens declare the glory of God. The firmament shows his handiwork. The heavens. The heavens is everything above. It's all that great expanse that's beyond, even in understanding and knowledge. And it all declares the glory of God. It declares his majesty. It declares his honor. It declares his creation, even. And, and we're going to find out, even in the beginning, and the firmament shows his handiwork. Uh, the firmament, the firmament is the expanse. It is, and it actually is that that divided the waters in the beginning. It separated the waters, and waters are always a understanding sea. And it's that which makes solid, or that which was solid, that passed between the waters. And it shows his handiwork. This handiwork here is a figure of speech. Handiwork is. Uh, the actual word is yad. And yad means uh, his hand or the strength or power or his work is, is, is what it represents. Three. Day unto day utter speech. Night unto night reveals knowledge. And day unto day, and, and day is a, a period of, of darkness, then light, and that makes the day, it's a period of time, and it, it, it is a combination of periods that, that result in the whole. Day is an understanding, it's a little understanding, and it's the accumulation of these little periods that make up a whole, or is part of. And day unto day it utters speech. And what we're talking about is, it's, is that which makes firm, that which was firm that passed between the waters. And we're going to learn what that is here just before long. Night unto night, uh, it reveals knowledge. And in, during the darkness, even in the darkness, night unto night, during these periods where it's, there is no understanding, it still reveals knowledge. Four. There is no speech, there are no words. 
neither is there a voice heard. There's no speech. We can't hear it. We can't hear it utter. See, we can't hear the great lesson in life that's coming forth. We don't understand that. There are no words. It's not audible. We can't hear exactly what the word is that it speaks. Neither is there a voice heard. There's no one speaking. And we can say here, there, there's the one who speaks. Five, their line has gone out through all the earth and their words to the end of the world. In them hath he set a tent for the sun. Their line is gone out through all the earth and once again we're still talking about this that divides that that which was solid that went between the waters this firmament the heavens the expanse it's what divided it even in the beginning and it, their line or their line because there are more than one uh, is gone out through all the earth and this line here is something we measure by something we're going to set it by it's actually it's a standard that we're going to judge everything by. And it's gone through all the earth. It's gone throughout all the earth, and that's the earth itself, and all things therein, even all things are made of the earth. That's where everything come from. And their words to the end of the world. And their words. These, uh, this word uh, is mila. And it's, their speech or their utterance, this this that's heard, this that's heard, and that's what it is. The and it goes to the end of the world, and that's how long it's going to be. It's going to last all the way to the end of all things, and in them, and in them, that's that's this which is uttered. He has set the tent for the sun. He has sent a tent for the sun, and that's that's this place where it'll come out of this tent this tabernacle even that and it's just like in the early morning we see the darkness is kind of like in, like uh, just before the sun comes up and the sun comes over the horizon and this is like the sun coming out of this tent so to speak but he has set this uh, that we're talking about it is the tent for the sun it's in a similitude to that and we're going to, we're going to find out what it is which is the bridegroom coming out of his chamber, and it rejoices as a strong man to run his course. And it is the bridegroom coming out of his chamber, uh, in comparison, just like the sun coming out of the darkness, or this, this bridegroom coming out of his chamber, his room, his place, and rejoices as a strong man to run his course. And he rejoices, he rejoices, he's happy, just like a strong man in a race, just like a strong man in a race, he's ready to go, he's ready to run his race, he's ready to do what is set before him, seven, his goings forth is from the end of the heaven, and his circuit unto the ends of it, and there is nothing hid from the heat thereof. His goings forth, and now we've we've actually given this 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 utterance, this that went forth, a a a a title of his. See, we're, we're calling it a his now, uh, as in comparison to the bridegroom. We're going to find out what it is. It's from the end of heaven, and its goings forth are from the end of heaven, from the end of all understandings, from the beginning to the end. And his circuit unto the ends of it. His circuit, that which goes around, that's what it is. It just keeps going around, going around, going around. I've said that a million times. It's because we're going around a million times. It's, and there is nothing hid from the heat thereof. This burning, this devouring fire is what it is. Eight. The law of the Lord is perfect. Restoring the soul. The testimony of the Lord is sure. Making wise the simple. And there it is. There's what it is. There is his. There is there. There it is. It's the law. It is the word. It's the speech heard. It's that which goes forth. It's that which divideth. It's solid. It's the terra firma. It's the ground itself that you stand on. It's the law of God. It's perfect. There's no error in it. It restores the soul. 
and restores the soul or turns the soul, makes it, turns it back. That's, this word restore uh, King James Version says converting. It converts the soul. The word is shub. Uh, and it literally means to return, to turn back, see, to and the law of God. It turns you back. It brings you back because God put it in your heart from the beginning. And it restores your soul. It gives you a place to stand in all darkness. The testimony of the Lord is sure. His testimony, we can look back from generation to gest generation and find the testimony of God. Right there it is. It speaks louder than the truth of men because they really don't have none. It makes it, it lays the facts bare in the rock. And it makes wise the simple. Those that they say don't have no understanding, but if they have the knowledge of the law, the understanding God give them, we'll find out they got more common sense than a lot of people we could question today. Nine, the precepts of the Lord are right and rejoice in the heart. The commandment of the Lord is pure, enlightening the eyes. And the precepts, these understandings of God, these uh, precepts, uh, the uh, King James says the statutes of the Lord are, are right. Well, these things that the Lord's declared, these this word is pekud, and it's it's a statute, it's a commandment, it's an ordinance, it's a law, it's a rule, it's an automatic thing set in the earth, and it recounts it it recounts it 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 is the sum of it. It is the recounting the over. And over and over, see that it, it's the circuit of it all. But these things are correct. These things are right. We'll find out. They're just. They're equal, uh, and they rejoice the heart, and they give the heart gladness. The understanding. There's under the understanding has happiness in these laws of God. This word law is Torah. It's Torah. We'll find out. It's the first five books of the of, of the what this great book they call the Bible. And his commandments are pure. They're, they're pure. They're like the purest water there is, we'll find out. It's like the waters of the Jordan, these that descend from God. The end. And they enlighten the eyes. And if you have your eyes closed, there's darkness. Well, these are the opening of the eye is what it is. The law is the opening of the eye. It's like opening your eye. And if we open our eyes in the flesh, we begin to see. Well, if we begin to obey the law, this is like opening the eye of the spirit. It's like opening the eyes. It's, it's the vision. It's the sight. It is uh, the, the, that which gives us knowledge. Let ten. The fear of the Lord is clean. Enduring forever, the ordinances of the Lord are true. They are righteous altogether. The fear of the Lord is clean. It is, it's made clean uh, to reverence God, to have respect for God. And it endures forever. There's no end to it. The ordinances of the Lord are true. That's because God's, God's statutes, God's laws are true. Uh, we can check it out. It's written in history. It's, this is the, the, the sum of the matter that these things have went on forever. And they're going to keep continuing until somebody stands up and says, What about the law? Why don't they keep the law? Eleven. More to be desired... Are they than gold? Yes. Than much fine gold, sweeter also than honey and the honeycomb. And because they are more to be desired than gold, yes, than this fine gold, it doesn't matter, all the gold in the earth uh, can't buy you understanding. It can't buy you knowledge. No, that all comes from God. And that comes from the observance of the law, the meditation in the understandings of God. And it's sweeter than honey. To, and we can compare it to honey. We can compare it to the honeycomb, that which we can chew over having that everlasting sweetness in it. Twelve. Moreover, 
By them is your servant warned. In keeping of them, there is great reward. And moreover, in addition to this, in addition to all the great understanding we can get from the Torah, it's a warning to your servant. It's a warning to your servant, this one who serves you, this one who makes himself just, this one who presents himself to God in the judgments of God according to the Torah. We'll find he is the servant of God. He's warned by these. He's warned. He's warned from the first one. You shall have no other God but me. You shall have no other teacher. God said, I am your teacher. I am the one you shall get your understanding from. This, this is the first rule of the classroom uh, for all the pupils. And in keeping them, there is a great reward. And in keeping them, there's going to be a great reward, we'll find out, because he is the, the great teacher he is the master of understanding he is where it comes from 13 who can discern his errors clear you me from hidden faults who can discern his errors who can who would who would know his errors who and this really should be which can we would understand it that way which can cause this who is the law and and it's not that he that has errors, it's you that has errors, and it can discern who has these errors, and it can clear, which we'll find out, from hidden faults. This, these hidden faults, these things we can't see, these things that are not made known, not made manifest, but are within, uh, it can clear these hidden faults as well. 14, and keep back your servant also from presumptuous sins, that they may not have dominion over me. Then shall I be faultless, and shall be clear from great transgression. Keep back your servant. Nay, keep your servant back. We find that he, this knowledge, this wisdom, this understanding that's there. Just like if someone would... Um, have to do something they have no understanding of, and these these few words here gives you all the knowledge that you're going to need to go forth to accomplish that matter. And these, but these presumptuous sins, these presumptuous sins are just like the hidden faults. These are those things we we don't know. These these transgressions. Sin is the transgression of the law of God. It's nothing more. It's nothing less. See, that's what sin is. It's defined by the law of God. But these presumptuous sins, the, the law of God, will, will prevent these presumptuous sins and keep you from them. And they shall not have dominion over you. You, sh you would be faultless. You should be clear from the great transgression. And that great transgression, we would find out, or not the great transgression, I guess, or just great transgression from going astray utterly, being totally made ignorant of the law because we'll find out generation after generation this is what happens, see, as they get further and further away from God's understanding, from the law, and they begin. This is the great transgression. We'll find out, though, the corrector is waiting to correct. 15. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable before you. O oh Lord, my rock, my redeemer. Let the words of my mouth are these things which I pour out. And that is the understanding that, that we have just heard. That this law is the sweetest thing there is. This law is that which transforms it forgives. We'll find out. By it shall you be redeemed. O oh Lord, my rock, my redeemer. Because that's who it is. The law come forth from God in the beginning. It was the word of God. And by it, we'll find out, were all things created. We're going to move forward to Psalms 20. Turn and return.